Zurich, how are you? All right, we are right into the year, middle of the year, hiking season, and uh, we thank God for preserving us, but we said we want to make ourselves prepared in the midst of this season. Well, again, this is the Church of the Nazarene Bible State Family Forum, and we are with you again. And uh, last Sunday, we were talking about partnering with parents and teachers for student success. And today is a second part of that program. Last Sunday, we zero in on the parents' role and how they can best help bring about success in the children's lives. And today we want to zero in on the teacher's role. And uh, perhaps we will zero in on some parent-teacher relationship as well, but zero in on the parent teacher's role um, in helping that child to succeed in their work. Um, there's a verse I want to share with you, and I know that this is a verse we know very well, because surely the child has a role to play in all this. If a parent show interest and the teachers show an interest, and the children don't, we have some problems. But we believe that if um, the teachers and parents realize the, the wonderful um, responsibility to invest in the lives of the children, that they will catch on, so to speak. But they have a role. Um, there's a verse in Second Timothy um, that speaks about their role, it says, Second Timothy 2.15 says, using the King James Version, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, ready dividing the word of truth. And of course, this particularly refers to studying the word and applying ourselves to the word, but of course, I think the principle here is similar, that a child that applies him or herself to, to our study will surely, in time, make that investment in their own lives that wouldn't avert <laughs> and avoid shame as they grow older, grow older because they use their time wisely. But conversely, those children who waste their time, um, in the long run, when of course, especially when they reach adulthood, realize sometimes they wish they can go back and do it over, so to speak. But we as parents and teachers have to guide them so they will capture the vision from early and apply themselves to wisdom. Have a comment? Yeah, it was a very um, fitting comment about yeah. Farley, you know, that we we met here with the sunshine. Yes. You know, because yeah. because of the time when it becomes a lot more difficult to meet here. It's yeah. not possible. That's right. But more difficult, you yeah. know, and yeah. um, and so and so yes, those that that's ten years. All right. Well today we have with us sometimes Roman Kelma and I we are by ourselves, but we are always happy to have a special guest. Today we have a special guest who would have been, if you watched last Sunday's program, we were glad to have him then. But I want to introduce him again, and um, Dr. Ian Marshall is an educator um, of 28 years experience, uh, teacher, trainer, and leadership development expert from as far as 2009 until present, of course. At present, he lectures in education leadership at UE. Um, and uh, also supervises um, leadership students, students who are doing their um, ed, MED and MPhil and of course PhD um, in leadership. He's also um, an educational consultant and uh, um, involved in training of incumbent and prospective educational leaders throughout the Caribbean. So he has a big um, plate, so to speak. <laughs> um, anyhow, he has the shoulders to carry it. And of course, he's ably supported by his lovely wife, Andrea, um, who's also an educator herself. And uh, of course, he has three children, um, Abiyomi, Naila, and Jelani. Of course, I didn't mention in the last program, but he's also an active member of the Korean Church of Nazarene and is a worship leader and of course uh, finally a preacher. So um, Dr. Marshall, 
Welcome. Okay, thank you, um, Pastor Farley, and good evening to all. Thank you for joining us, and I trust we'll have a really good discussion. Yes, all right. Hey, back with us in a moment. So, folks, just before we do that, um, we have to just ask God's blessing on this session. Father, we thank you again for this facility uh, where we can work with CBC to touch lives out there in the community, uh, Church of Nazarene, and in this family forum where we zero in on issues related to the family. Father, we leave it as we can tackle some of these difficult issues, then we will have a better Barbados. So bless our efforts today as we zero in on this topic of partnering with parents and teachers for student success. Bless our efforts and guide us. And particularly, we are thankful for Dr. Marshall who has made himself available and shared with us and made the sacrifice. May God bless him as well in his ministry and also, of course, in his educational endeavors and in his work. We thank you, Lord, for this session today. For Christ's sake, amen. Wow, back with you in a moment. Again, call a friend. Maybe one of your, your students, um, whether it doesn't matter the age, whether you're primary, secondary, or tertiary. Um, teachers out there as well as parents, we hope to say something that will help you in your journey. Back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, welcome back to you. And again, we are very fortunate to have Dr. Marshall and we're going to be sharing some points for consideration, you know, in terms of things that teachers can look, can look for and can look to mm -hmm. in terms of how they can help their students. Mm -hmm. much over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Reverend Kellerman, and good evening again. And um, I just want to start by, by prefacing what I'm going to say with the, with the it's not a disclaimer, just an a, a indication of my, my personal bias. Mm -hmm. And my personal bias is that I support teachers 100%. So as a mem as a trade unionist, um, I support this is 100%. And I think the first thing we, we, we want to say is that for me, if teachers are going to fulfill the mandate that has been given to them, the most important thing to my mind is preparation. Okay. Teachers must be prepared. Okay. And when I say preparation, I mean preparation for the day's activities. If you have your classes to, to teach, then you ensure that when you come to the classroom, you are indeed prepared. Because um, it is interesting that, as a, that students are able to detect very, very early if the teacher has come to the classroom prepared. And they, there's a piece of research that I did, um, it talks about stopping discipline problems before they start. Mm -hmm. And the research essentially shows that if teachers come to the classrooms unprepared, the students detect that and they have no end of disciplinary problems. <laughs> so the most important thing is come to your classroom being fully prepared. And in a, in, as a corollary for that, I want to say that you, you, you come with enthusiasm because, again, if, if you come into your, your, your teaching environment and you come in and you are drab, you are, you are lackluster, you are like, okay, I'm here doing this job because I'm being paid, the, the students also pick that up. And I remember being at university uh, and sitting in a class and it was, I was in awe of the person who was teaching the class because the, the person was just so enthusiastic, so energetic. So even if they were teaching about some, uh, let's say moon science for argument's sake, <laughs> the person was so energetic and enthusiastic about it that it caused you to sit up and say, no, this has to be important. Mm -hmm. So you need to come to the table from the get-go full of enthusiasm because you cannot communicate to the students that this is important to them if you yourself mm -hmm do not reflect that is a, it is important by being prepared and coming with an enthusiastic frame of mind. Mm -hmm. That is the first one. I'll stop there mm -hmm. for comments from you, Mr. Kelman. Yeah, well, that's, that's, a, that's a mofo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um, uh, into a preparation. Uh, and of course, preparation would be 
based on the level you're teaching at as well too. Mm-hmm. You know, but they have charts and, and those sort of things, those mm-hmm. teacher aids, mm-hmm. you know, to kind of support um, the, 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 the process, you know. Uh, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking as he spoke about preparation, it is so critical. And I think I was thinking of preparation even in a wider sense. Mm-hmm. That's why we need teacher training. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll prepare your mindset, you, pre- mm-hmm. you understand what you're getting into. Mm-hmm. You now, teaching is a wonderful. You now, we ourselves are teachers, now we know that teaching is a wonderful occupation. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's very, very intense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A, teacher, a teacher is always teaching. You go mm-hmm. home. And uh, people say, well, leave your books at school. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you, you still, you may leave your books at school, you may not be correcting work at home, mm-hmm. but when you, your mind is still rolling, mm-hmm. what you're doing the next day. Mm-hmm. So I think preparation also, I would say from the point of view, that if you get into teaching, be prepared mm-hmm. that this is a lifelong engagement. Mm-hmm. Um, but I understand the whole idea of preparing then per lesson and the mm-hmm. units and so on, and that mm-hmm. is so true. Mm-hmm. Um, and Robert Kelman is saying, if you're preparing for the infants, you need to have your visual aids. Mm-hmm. I suppose if, as they go hurry up, the aids may differ, mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. methods may differ, mm-hmm. but preparation is critical. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, from experience, though, when you have prepared and you have those aids, it really brings, mm-hmm. bring, even if you have aids, you have, you have illustrations, mm-hmm. it, it brings the um, class alive. Mm-hmm. And as you said, you want to be part of the, I mean, uh, Dr. Marshall spoke about when he was at university as a student, mm-hmm. and he still remembers the the wonderful impact mm-hmm. that that teacher had on him. No, mm-hmm. he's a teacher, right? But correct. many years ago, he, he, I see as he shared it, I see the smile on his face. Mm-hmm. He remembered many back then mm-hmm. how that teacher brought the lesson of life. Mm-hmm. I mean, and you're, and you're, you're actually a, a, a crucial part of shaping mm-hmm. that, that, that child's interest yes. in, in learning and yes. education, mm-hmm. you know, and um, if, it, if it was that, that enthusiasm, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. maybe you're saying to them that this is not that really, this is not really that, that important, you know, mm-hmm. but the enthusiasm mm-hmm. came to convey, wow, this is, this is exciting stuff, mm-hmm. you really need to understand it, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Right, um, and uh, and those those impressions mm-hmm. can last that show for a lifetime. But mm-hmm. well, even if it's a difficult subject, mm-hmm. enthusiasm becomes a vehicle to dig deeper. Mm-hmm. This is interesting. It's difficult, but I'm going to dig deeper. I'm going mm-hmm. to research. I'm going to do what. It's a motivating factor. Mm-hmm. I remember, remember my uh, <laughs> eleven mouse teacher, mm-hmm. and uh, he made mouse come alive. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, he would just go to the board and start writing and. Uh, you know, a person would be would be connected to him, you know, mm-hmm. and he would make little little quips or little comments, mm-hmm. people laughing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And before you knew it, you understood the mm-hmm. the, the, the topic, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. methodology. Yes. You know, it, it made it so so simple, so mm-hmm. so you know, engaging. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, so, I think yeah. I know I know everybody is not a comedian, right? Mm-hmm. But part of that enthusiasm, mm-hmm. I find, is humor. Mm-hmm. No, I, I you I, you recalled. When you were at UE, but I recall when it was at Erson College training, there was a guy, a teacher by the name of um, Mr. Best, I don't remember his first name now, mm-hmm. taught science. Yes. He was so jovial. Mm-hmm. I mean, he took science, and you know what? He attached a joke to the principal. Mm-hmm. So when you remember the joke, you remember the principal. Mm-hmm. He, he was doing an experiment. And I mean, the jokes were dry, but they were still yeah, very good, very <laughs> good. good you know? mm-hmm. So I said to myself, well, what a powerful method. Mm-hmm. You're able then to mm-hmm. remember. So I think part of the enthusiasm there mm-hmm. was the whole idea of humor. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. And um, I, 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 I know to whom you refer. Okay. He used to call him. Arabet. Arabet. Right, right. He's right. passed on now. Right, he is passed on. So oh, call boy. Him. He was affectionately <laughs> called Old Man Best. Okay. But every person who went through oh, Erdison yeah. would speak about the dry humor of yes. Old Man Best. And yes. as you said, he made it come alive. Yeah. Uh, the, the example that I referenced earlier <laughs> was um, um, Professor Alan Cobley. Oh, yes. And he, I know him. He, he was, I mean, he was outstanding as yes. a, as a, as a, Pedagog, pedagogic, pedagogical expert in terms teaches. of he, he oh, still okay. teach, he still he's in administration now. Yeah, okay. But I remember sitting in his classes, yes. 
and remarking again, you know what, this level of enthusiasm yes. is something that I want to emulate. Yes. So that for me was, was, was significant mm -hmm. uh, at the university level. So yes. it just shows you that even at the university level, you, need some, you still need, you need some help. Some help. And, and even <laughs> having gone back to university quite recently, I can also think of other um, lecturers that made um, the subject so interested. I can, I can think of Dr. Janelle Matthews mm -hmm. And her, her whole preparation, when you came to her classes, you could see, well, this Sorrow. lady was prepared to the end. Yes. And again, she was also a very, very, very good practitioner of, of, in terms of being able to deliver. Yes. And this is at university level. So yes. whether you are at primary school, you are at secondary school, or you are at the tertiary level, yes. preparation and enthusiasm, mm -hmm. those are critical. You know, you know, this raises the whole issue, though, of emotional intelligence, though. Yes. Um, because no, we're not we're not talking about the content that was being conveyed. We haven't got there yet. Right, we're talking about the attitude around mm -hmm. to convey the content. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. yes. And um, it influences the learning and, process. And, right, it does say though mm -hmm. that it is critical mm -hmm. that you know in teaching we have some kind of understanding mm -hmm. of, of emotional intelligence and how mm -hmm. we impact on people yeah. mm -hmm. even before we begin, begin, begin to understand the content. Yes. Mm -hmm. And of course, it, what you're saying here that this act of preparation and enthusiasm impacts lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. And as Reverend Kelman said, we have I mean, a talk with content, whether you're doing history or mm -hmm. doing maths, mm -hmm. but it's the whole approach. Mm -hmm. So then the content, it seems to me, although I understand the content that you're teaching is critical, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how you package it mm -hmm. is going to determine how the students Respond to it, respond to it, or reject. Mm -hmm. And your relationship as well. Too. Relationship. Mm -hmm. relationship. And, and yeah. that's that's yeah. that's that's big. You know, cultivating that yes. relationship yes. with the student, mm -hmm. that holistic relationship, yeah. uh, uh, forces you to do the bridge, you know, the opportunity mm -hmm. to convey content. So mm -hmm. what we're saying here it seems to me, Dr. Marsh, you're saying that learning can become uh, exciting. Of course, and definitely, interesting. and interesting, yeah, okay. and interesting. What any uh, is there a third point you want to share? Preparation. Yeah. Um, enthusiasm, mm -hmm. and, and, and he wanted to, to, to segue to relationship. Okay. Um, Reverend Kelman spoke about it, yes. but I just want to expand on it a bit more because, mm -hmm. again, th then, then you have a relationship with your students. Mm -hmm. Because of that type of relationship and rapport, mm -hmm. then the student is, is, again, more motivated mm -hmm. to do well in your class. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't get away from it. The research bears it out that if the teacher establishes a relationship with the children, then the children are more inclined to, mm -hmm. to perform. Yeah. Because if I come into your classroom and I'm only concerned about whether you have done my homework, mm -hmm. if I'm only concerned about whether you understand the concept, and that is it. But I don't look at you, for example, and recognize, okay, this child is not really behaving consistent with, with how they were behaving Custom. previously. Yeah. So if, if I can't be able to detect, okay, something's wrong with this student. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe issue, not feeling well. He's not feeling well, yeah. or there may have be some sort issue. of issue that issue. occurred at home before yes. they got there. Yes. So you, you should be if you're in a relationship, mm -hmm. the child will come and say, "Well, you you can go and say, well, but I noticed that today in class, for example, you weren't as sharp. Yes. Is there an issue? Yes. But if you don't have a relationship with that child, that child will not be prepared to divulge yes. to you what is really going you. on. Yeah. But if you have a relationship, mm -hmm. the child will come and say, well, you know what, ma'am or sir, this is what is transpiring in home, mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So, and the research again bears that out, mm -hmm. that when we go into um, teaching spaces, we must understand that relationship is key. Mm -hmm. You cannot get success mm -hmm. devoid of a relationship with your students, I, essentially. I think, I think that is really critical. It goes back to what we talked about earlier on, the magnitude of teaching. Because mm -hmm. I may have 25 students. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do I create a relationship with 25 students? Mm -hmm. what, what you suggest? Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of relationship with 25 students, I would say, Again, you can't be prescriptive. Mm -hmm. What you do is that you, you have to allow, do your class. yes, and you allow the relationships to build naturally. Okay. And and how, how do you do that? You don't you, impose. You, you don't impose, mm -hmm. but you also maintain set some parameters. Yes. You establish first of all professional distances boundaries. and boundaries. boundaries. Yeah. And then thereafter, because you have established those professional boundaries, mm -hmm. then you are able then to build the relationship on a, on, on a platform Score. of trust mm -hmm. and a platform of professional the, yes. um, um, orientation, more or less. Wonderful. Because you also want to protect yourself, as a, uh, especially as male teachers, mm -hmm. because again, you, you work in schools and you have, you have several male, uh, female students um, before you. And, and the challenge that I find that male teachers may have 
um, whether at any level, is that once you're dealing with females in, in, a, in a classroom setting, you must always maintain your professional distance. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can be cordial, but at the same time, you, you, you maintain your professional distance. And for me, that is one of the things that I insist on um, from the very beginning, yeah. that I will, because I, I like to crack a lot of jokes in my class as well. <laughs> I use humor all the time in my class. Yeah. I use uh, old sayings, um, Bajan sayings, etc. Mm -hmm. And I always try to be as, as humorous, not humorous, but I mean, you, you, you play same jokes and so on. Mm -hmm. And that helps um, the students yes. to learn. Mm -hmm. But the important thing, as I said, is that when you have that relationship, mm -hmm. once you establish the parameters under which you'll be operating, yes. that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And as I said, you, you can be prescriptive as you, as they get to see who you are, Mm -hmm. then they're the students, yes. they will come and reach out to you where and understand from. where you're coming from. Yes. And, and, and then you get that reciprocal relationship mm -hmm. going and you build on that. Mm -hmm. But So it's not prescriptive, it is like allowing the relationships to emerge on yes. their own. And as their, res their respect level for you grows, mm -hmm. then you will find that relationship will build even stronger. Mm -hmm. So even at the university level, you will find you have students that you, adults again, that you teach and years after they will see you and, and because you have that level of relationship, relationship mm -hmm. they will still come to you and say, okay, what do you think about this? What is your advice on X or Y? Mm -hmm. So it goes way beyond even the classroom. classroom yes. So yes. The, the, again, it, the bedrock is mm -hmm. good relationships. And I, I, just to bring it back to the primary school, it is even more critical mm -hmm. In the, at the primary school level yes. because the, these children look up to, to primary school teachers in such a way that if, if if I, I, I'm, I'm a teacher um, myself, and if I were to tell my, my children to do something because they understand the concept, they will not follow that, 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 that way. Mm -hmm. They will say, well, the teacher said do it this way, yeah. and I will do it this that way. Even so though true. I'm a teacher, you know. That is true. And I'm saying to them, well, <laughs> this is an alternative way. They will say, no, the teacher said, this is the preset. We are following what the teacher said. It shows us the trust. The trust that they, in that, that they that have. Shows the investing in teachers. Right. It also shows the level of relationship that Correct. they have with teachers yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I oftentimes will say that teachers perhaps spend more more waking hours mm -hmm. with uh, and productive hours with all children, even mm -hmm. some parents. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. You know, mm -hmm. and therefore they can exert a phenomenal mm -hmm. amount of influence yep. on the minds of yeah. those of those children. Yeah. And, and that's what we have to kind of be always aware of though yes. in the teacher fraternity, mm -hmm. um, the, the level of, of power that's yes. given to the teacher, yeah. especially at, at the mm -hmm. point of the school. But I level. think we can we can pause here a moment, but I, in a moment I want to say though that point is a beautiful point, uh, Reverend Kelman that uh, as teachers, having awareness of the kind of impact that you can have, mm -hmm. or you call it power, which is true. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is use that power to empower yeah. your students. And I think you make a quick comment before you go to break though. Mm -hmm. This topic is a very, very um, important one. Many, many years ago, I, I, I thought that you know, in every teacher program, mm -hmm. there should be a, a module that talks about awareness for teaching. Mm -hmm. And awareness being, what are some of your idiosyncrasies, what are some of your challenges, what are some of your strengths, mm -hmm. and what are some of your life experiences mm -hmm. that can either hinder or help you to be yes. an effective teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Personal point. Point. development. Yes, mm -hmm. point. All right, um, viewers, I hope you are enjoying, I not only enjoying, but something that we've seen here can be useful to you. Back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum. Shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Back with you again. Yes, we want to continue our topic as we speak about the whole idea of partnering with teachers and parents for our student success. We were zeroing in on some of those areas um, that parents can, that teachers can tap into. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Marshall want to continue, um, conclude I should say, that focus. Dr. Yeah. Marshall? Yeah, thank you Reverend Farley. And again, I just want to mention the next one, which would be the, the need for ongoing professional development on the part of teachers. I believe that if, if you are interested in, in developing your craft and being the very best exponent as, as, as a, a, of teaching a, a really good pedagogue, then you need as a teacher to, to focus on professional um, 
uh, lifelong um, learning, essentially. In other words, I don't want you to be satisfied with just doing your teacher training certificate and that's it. Because as you, as you, as the world um, develops, you will see there are always new ideas, new things you can try. So that orientation, which, which comes out of an understanding of um, having what, what I call a growth mindset, meaning that you you are constantly looking to grow and to improve. And essentially, what that does, even within the space where you teach, is that it also motivates the te the, the students under your charge. In other words, if you if you are as a as a teacher can say to your students, well, you know, I'm also studying. Yes. You'll be surprised the impact that has That's on right. your own students that you are teaching. Because they're like, well, how come you are already qualified and you are still looking to right. expand your knowledge? Mm -hmm. So that also motivates them as well yeah. to, to do well. Because you can identify mm -hmm. with, with the things with which they are going through. In fact, that was one of the things that was very critical even in, in the last few years for me when I was also studying again. And each, I, was, I would tell the students, so they were complain, but sir, these assignments are, are coming fast and furious. <laughs> I said, well, I empathize because I also have some assignments coming fast and furious. <laughs> so so we, we were in the space, both um, yeah. training, both Study. learning, yeah. and that, that created a very, very good rapport within the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, this is at university level, even yeah. let alone at primary and secondary. Right. And the last thing I want to talk about uh, is essentially the commitment level. I believe that if, if we are going to excel and do our very best as, as teachers, we need to um, sh uh, demonstrate a level of commitment to the profession. Mm -hmm. I don't mean, uh, because essentially what would happen is that teachers go through what they call the, the teacher career cycle. They come in, let us say for argument, say bright eyed and bushy tail, then they <laughs> get to that middle stage where they are <laughs> settled and relaxed, and then they go into what we call, what the literature calls the departure lounge. <laughs> and, and what happens is that when you get to the departure lounge, you just turn up for work, mm -hmm. and you're basically what if the literature calls your absent present, or they call it presenteeism, <laughs> where you are just there, but you are not really producing as you ought to. So I'm suggesting... But that's scary, though. It depends on how long you're in the lunch. Yes, exactly. <laughs> precisely. In fact, some, some persons will argue that you get into the lunch too early. <laughs> <laughs> but I just understand the impact that that can have it's on true. your, on on your the pedagogy, on, on the student that's and on true. your pedagogy. That's true. Because if you are saying, well, I have done all that I can do now, mm -hmm. That, that means that you're not going to be looking to be a lifelong learner. Yeah. So what we are suggesting that commitment then as mm -hmm. to the profession right. will motivate you to continue to re reform yourself each yeah. time so you, uh, so you remain relevant yes. to your students. And that is yes. very, very important. And we the last, reinvent yourself, reinvent yourself essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And the last thing I would, I would touch on here is the importance of the, the, the parent and teacher relationship. Yes. That is, that is critical because we cannot achieve student outcomes mm -hmm. if we don't have effective teacher and parent relationships. Yeah. And essentially what we want to do is to maintain that relationship because we are in partnership. Yes. These teachers are in partnership with the parents yes. and they both want the same thing, the which is positive school outcomes. So that is critical to my mind and that one needs to be underscored. Yes. Okay, Reverend Kevin, I'll end there. Yes. Since they're out of time. Yes. Uh, well, I, I, think, I think you've done a wonderful job, yes. uh, Marshall. Yes. Uh, yes. And I think that uh, both peers and teachers um, could benefit tremendously mm -hmm. uh, from the information that will be shared with these last two programs. Yes. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You are most uh, welcome. Sharing so, so well with us. Thanks a whole lot. Yeah, thank you, Reverend Hello, Party as well. Father, give you thanks today for your graciousness in our lives. We thank you for the gift of, of teachers and parents. And Father, we pray, God, for your divine help and strength and direction. Help us, Lord, as we seek, Lord, to invest in our children to do it well. So they have good positive outcomes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks Amen. again, Dr. Marshall. You are most welcome. Well, viewers, thank you for sharing with us. God bless you.